me. I be on my mission. Catch me, candid for these lenses. Catch me one day whipping in these benches. Catch me, catch me, catch me. Catch me, like you playing on on. Roll one, and you gon' sing along. Hey, sip some, and you gon' get your dance on. Catch me, catch me, catch me, yeah. Drowning in ambition now. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Kalim Chizzy Hendrix, also known as Crazy Kai and coming back to another episode of Couch Creators. Hope you're having a good day as I am. I'm super excited because like I said, it's a new episode, new beginning, new guest, new host and we're going to have fun on the show. Hope you're ready for this because we have the beautiful Zelia next to me. Zelia, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you feeling? Can I shake your hand? Sorry. Oh yeah. yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> I want to be formal, you know, I want to be like, hey, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming through. Let's try to get the formalities out of straight, out of the way. Guys, I have new braces in my teeth, so if I'm speaking shit, sorry. We're gonna just roll with it. Celia, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. How are you feeling? Me. I'm excited. For you excited? What's to come? Today. I'm almost excited, you know. I'm nervous, you know that. Don't be. I'm nervous for you, you know. <laughs> for you, actually, not for myself. That's All crazy. Right. So, Zelia, for the audience that's watching you right now, tell us a little about yourself. What's, what's happening? Who's Zelia? Um, I'm a student, You're first there. and foremost, uh, but I also double as an activist mm. and um, a creative. And a creative. Typical a Cape Town creative. A student, an activist, and a creative. Uh, yeah. So many things. Uh, where do you find the time to balance all three? It's like you're uh, like eating lunch. Does it make sense? Uh? You're a student in the morning for breakfast, and then lunchtime you're an activist, and then dinner you're a Creative, huh? No, I think activism happens all day. Ah. Um, university for like a few hours and then the creative things you do on the weekends or to just balance everything out, like mm. the photography or the sketching. Yeah. The sketch? Mm. What do you sketch about? You sketch um, about um, just like active science or something? Um, just faces. Ah. Yeah. Do you have dreams of these faces? Or like, no, or it's like just like maybe people that I've been inspired by um, or someone that has impacted me um, in my journey or someone like special just being able to like immortalize things through mm. photography and art mm. is the main reason why I do it Wow, yeah. it's amazing eh? it's, a, it's so I just want to ask you just like a deep breath in right now because I feel like we're just too formal out here. I feel like Zayla, I'm pretty sure you're not like this in front of your peers, you know? No. I feel like because you, all the eyes is on you, all the cameras is looking at you, you have to sit and sit and stand, and, which I understand, you know? You want to portray yourself to the people that look up to you for like guidance and influential um, aspirations as well. So you need to sit and sit and stand it. So yeah. I feel like, you know, let's appeal to the youngsters out there, you know, to make um, activism look cool, you know? Not yeah. as something that's formal when I'm not saying it's boring or anything yeah. like that but you want more of the youth to be involved in what you're doing right mm -hmm. no there is actually a number of youth mm. involved I see it especially like at protests mm. and things like that like when you organize a protest you obviously have to get like police clearance yeah. and all those things and then in the process of it you like um, are people gonna turn up yeah and then you have it you host it and there's always like a good amount of people that show up especially like younger girls and um, that shows me that there is a youth that's radical yeah which I'm do you think there's for. abundance in abundance or is just mm, like not as much as I'd obviously like to see yeah do you think they're doing it for just for the hype like I want to be a lot of the time just follow the way the cloud the crowd yeah. is going to and then I just want to be part of the movement not mm -hmm. knowing what the real cause is behind it but just listen to what the media is saying and then like okay whatever is happening with them, I want to support their cause but they don't do their background mm -hmm. check or research to actually you know understand what they're fighting for or against you know yeah that does happen I mean like obviously we take Twitter into consideration Twitter do you believe in like Twitter? Do you, is no. it? Oh, okay. Um, Twitter is like cabinet almost. Mm. Everyone has a say and then it gets out of hand. Mm. But um, like people do follow a movement, like especially with like the GBV movement that was yeah. happening in 2019, like after Jess and um, Yenene passed away, like people were just rallying to Cape Town mm. and then they had the massive protest. I, yeah, don't know I, if, I like, remember that. Yeah. yeah. And then it just died. Mm. because then like something else came in during COVID it was Black Lives Matter yeah. and then it immediately like replaces so they jump on the next hype train yes you know? but I mean it doesn't resolve the issue because I yeah. mean it's still like gender based violence is still a major thing keep yeah. the energy still posting all the time so as an activist how what initiative do you take to ensure that 
those stories and those um, you know that those marches are not just being fading away and just be being forgotten. You know, like how do you keep on making sure that the the conversation is remain opened and not just moved on to the next hype train? You know, how yeah. do you how do you make gender-based violence relevant, Black Lives Matters relevant, still continue the conversation among your peers? You know, for as long as we exist, mm. it's going to be relevant. Yeah. Um, but to constantly keep our hype around it is mm. by posting. Mm. Like our biggest source of life these days yeah. comes from our phones. Like yeah. when our phone dies, like you don't know what to do with yourself. You don't yeah. know how to get home or whatever. Yeah. It sounds stupid, but it's the reality. We live in a technology driven mm. world. So to keep it like alive on social media is my biggest like bingo card that I use. Wow. So by posting, by speaking about it, by posting educational things like yeah. on my um, other page, which is Break the Silence. It's a movement I started um, in 2021. So I constantly educate people on there by how to keep safe, how to um, handle gender-based violence if you mm. have been a victim, where to go. So things like that. People enjoy reading it. Yeah. And obviously keeping a major um, safe space for women to come yeah. with their stories where you won't feel judged. And something I also always like to touch on is the Cape Flats. So where is a safe space? Is it virtually or is it a physical? Virtually. But I do, like, I do link a lot of the people to Rape Crisis. Yeah. I've myself visited Rape Crisis to see the facility, see what they do, see mm. if it's a place that makes you feel safe because you, you actually go visit those places yeah okay it's a lot of responsibility don't they look at you and think like who is this person does she have a lot of life experience to know I'm not saying you mm -hmm. don't i'm just saying do you feel judged and feel like belittled uh, thinking like uh, is this girl really actually doing it for the right reasons or is she just doing it for influ influential mm. statuses you know no i think the fact that i'm still doing it mm. is Proof of enough. all the years that you yeah. I mean I didn't stop after that major protest no mm. shade to anyone who did stop because mm. it is taxing mm. like you've got to be a certain kind of like strong when mm. you do activism because you get backlash you get called mm. the b-word very often um, men look at you weirdly or they ask you are you gonna cancel me like mm. that's the thing I get I mean I experienced that almost yeah, yeah, yeah. you came for me in 2020 um, yeah, exactly so yeah. that's like something I get asked by guys like are you mm. gonna cancel me because mm. most of the time like like misogynistic jokes get mm. made amongst guys mm. um, and like it doesn't always sit well with me so if something does like really make me as a woman feel degraded or yeah. like any gender yeah. feel degraded then I will step in that's also part of being an activist even if you don't so, do it as a full-time job it's still our human responsibility to make sure that everyone around us yes. feels comfortable yeah because you wouldn't want to feel left out mm. simply because you are different to what's considered normal of course yeah so how do you educate these men that are um, not very mindful towards um, the opposite sex feelings you know in terms of saying certain words that could be offensive towards you without attacking them or say like you say cancelling them and having a proper open conversation so that we can debunk the the misunderstanding that they might be having between the opposite genders you know like you firstly like I've got to approach gently mm. have you done it I feel like I see you got a huge smoke on your face you know because sometimes <laughs> emotion can kick in you know sometimes yeah. you just see something that irks you and you just feel the need to just step in to speak your mind you know and then afterwards when the damage has been good it's like what for how how would you yeah. sort of resolve it from there you know no because now it's just a heated debate and argument going on like something that you are taught in gender studies mm. is to be calm mm. because i promise you like gender studies lectures are as intense as those protests are mm. you in a room full of feminists we all want the same thing which is equality and justice for women mm. so naturally it's going to get heated but then it also teaches you to be mindful of other people's feelings and experiences mm. so in front of me should I experience this with a male is obviously someone who isn't educated mm. on what I'm educated on and I've got to approach that gently because not everyone has the education that I have on this but it doesn't acquit you of getting it I mm. mean there's the internet there's a library mm. there are people who do what I do that you can speak to mm. so no one has an excuse to not be educated mm. on how to respect a woman yeah it's basic 
I can almost say manners to respect a woman. But do you believe it can it happen overnight? No. Yeah. It didn't happen overnight for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm still learning. Yeah. I study gender studies, but every day I still learn new things yeah. about gender studies. So, so you believe that an old, grumpy old man can change his ways? You know? I do. Yeah. My, I mean, like, yes, an old dog does struggle to learn new yeah. tricks. Human beings, it takes 21 days for the brain to adapt yeah. to a new habit. And I yeah. mean, it's quite difficult because you know you have been exposed to this from your schooling. You study at uh, UWS, right? And you're exposed to all this um, knowledge. Yeah. And like you said, you spoke with a classroom full of individuals that can share their input as well. Mm -hmm. And you're getting that experience firsthand. You know, also through protesting. And there's individuals who are just born into a household where a man is a dominant figure and he just you know especially in certain cultures where it's tradition to be disrespecting or well not disrespecting but you know being a powering figure in a relationship and then you know you look up to those um, male figures while there are some individuals also that those with a single parent yeah they look up to their mothers when they don't have father figures to show them the right ways mm -hmm. so they look outside in their community through cancer and stuff to see how they treat women and they for that's how they were conditioning like to um, to present themselves you know in terms of yes I know I know but you get what I'm saying so yeah. how would how, how would that person now trying to you know better themselves to become how would you educate that person going forward like the first thing that I always implement when I do talks and things like this is I start with the youth mm. the youth then goes home to tell their parents their mm. parents will spread it to the aunties the aunties will spread it to mm. someone older maybe someone at their workplace and before you know it mm. the good that you are teaching mm. is being spread around yeah so you've got to start somewhere and the most important place to start is the youth because ultimately the youth will influence the older people mm. it's the same with like Jesus mm. um, you have God who's set on these ideals and then Jesus comes into the New Testament and he sort of makes Christianity easier to understand because grace is introduced so it's like the same situation because mm. Jesus was like an activist yeah in that period yeah implementing a new movement known as Christianity so it's the same way the same approach we use starting from the young age the youth specifically speaking of the youth um the youth now is looking especially in the male um i can't speak for all of the all the male figures out there but they are men are lost these days you know there's not a lot of proper male leaders and role models yeah and unfortunately there's individuals like andrew tates for example i see how you I your <laughs> eyes, yeah, yeah, that are you no know, giving a voice for the men that's not uh, that are voiceless you know because mm -hmm. they're struggling to find their identity in terms of what it takes to be a proper man you know what does it take to be a proper what's your opinion wasn't what? andrew in prison yeah he was in prison something. yeah 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 so that but he's out enough. now you know he's out now oh. yeah he's out now it's terrible yeah yeah um so there are obviously going to be a lot more Andrew Tates to come. Yeah. Birthing this very odd generation of yeah. men. Because that's like, it, he doesn't see the harm in it, but mm. those men, not, you know, to say it's going to happen, but mm. per se it does, they turn out to be rapists mm. or abusers or enablers mm. of the people I just mentioned mm. now. And people don't see the damage, they just see a very buff guy mm. with a car and a house and mm. an attitude and they're like oh my word i want to be like him yeah and that's the, the issue with like our generation that can be bad is yeah. they follow everything that's trending even if it's bad yeah so uh, wouldn't that be also the opposite if someone who doesn't have a male figure in their life yeah they will seek out yes. where like f like a male figure in the gangster yes they say okay this is the only closest thing that i have a male father figure so they do wrong things mm. like rob people or like get into crime and stuff like that because they don't have a, a leader That's so how we find a balance now between the two yeah what would what is your ideal a uh, male should be then i don't think there is an ideal there's no ideal like anyone the, should be like this uh, ideal man should behave then you know like how should they behave in society with utmost respect you know and i mean obviously that's like a pipe dream having everyone mm. be a certain way yeah but just like respect women respect your surroundings mm. be thoughtful of other people i don't know if that's possible yeah. um for everyone but it would be great if like 
that could happen because if we're thoughtful of one another's feelings and where we are in life then I do believe it would be a better place. As mm. for the lack of male figures in people's lives and turning to men such as Andrew Tate, yeah, um, that's just a sad reality of our society. Mm. There is a lack of father figures. But my suggestion is if you are in school or university or have someone in your family that you regard mm. as a like fatherly figure, um, utilize that. Mm. I've got, um, obviously have a dad, but I do have other people that I do mm. regard as father figures, like um, a reverend of mine, or like my favorite uncle. Like mm. There are ways to find healthy father figures. Mm. And I need people to know that that's a reality. You don't have to turn to social media to find safety the whole time. Yeah, There's actual real people in life that can guide you. You just have to look beyond your screen Yeah, for that. Do you guide men as well through your activism? I would like to hope so. Yeah. Um, no, like actually have like one-on-one -on -one talks with males. Like, yes, um, I've had a few lives yeah. with um, guys who are activists. Yeah who um, do fight for the rights of women. Like, yeah. I don't know if um, this is public knowledge, but Keep the Energy, do you know that page? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's run by a guy. Okay. Yeah, he's amazing. Like, wow. honestly, he's amazing. It's crazy, no? it's, it's, it's something like new. I never knew about that, no, no. It's possible yeah. for like a male to be woke yeah not in this like normal wokeness but to be aware rather do you think that wokeness has become issues? too um mainstream now like every, everything is becoming silly now in terms of wokeness yeah do you believe so i do or am i am i being exaggerating yet? no it, it is true like there's no fine line anymore mm. like everything's becoming an issue mm. and i mean yes there are things that have to be addressed but um it's mostly people are acting before thoroughly looking at something. Mm. Do you, who's your inspiration? Do you listen to Candace Owens, Jay, Dave Chappelle, Jay, Ben Chappelle, I don't know. Very... Um, um, Chowder, what is that, the guy, Crowder? Very cliche, but um, I like Audrey Lord. Audrey Lord, never heard of him. And what is him? Her. her, she's an activist. Okay. And like if I have to move to South Africa, then um, you would, but you are in South Africa. No, I mean like oh. iconic women. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, probably like Albertina Sisulu. Oof. Wow, see, that's a powerful one. Eh? Yeah. Not even Winnie Mandela. Eh? No, I, I like Winnie's movements, but okay. um, Albertina's approach was very. So that's what that's what she inspired well. you into activism. She. It's my f like when Jesse died, my yeah. friend. Yeah. That pushed me. So when did it start for you? In 2019. 2019. When Jesse Hess. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Lost her life to gender-based violence. I felt like I've got to constantly like allow her voice to be heard. Yeah. Even though um, she's no like longer with us. Yeah. I I'm, everything I do, I do for Jesse. Wow. Yeah. yeah, were you a close relation to that or did it uh, like some well, She was like my first proper friend in my first year at university. At UW? Yeah. Oh yes, I remember. Theology yes. students. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, that was a we sad story. We had all of our subjects together, so. Man. Yeah. I just went on the trance of going back to history and I just mm -hmm. to see that tragic event uh, with her uh, grandpa uh, as well. Do you know Craig Rumble? Yes. Oh, yes, I yes. know of him. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You same class as well, no? I don't. Because oh. you also studied sociology. No, I didn't do SOC. Oh, okay. First year. Just going back to let's let's take a let's take a quick step outside uh, activism because I feel like there's more to you than activism mm -hmm. as well. Let's talk about the the creative side of things as well. Tell us about that. How do you fit your activism and creativity together? You know. So, um, in terms of how I put the two together, is I would create art to highlight activists that I find inspiring so my favorite activist um hails from bontieville and his name is ashley krill mm -hmm. so he started a movement which emancipates colored people mm -hmm. so um that's that's someone that i really look up to so you do you sketch art? I sketch him yeah okay so but like i try to make it as hyper realistic as possible mm. and then dalshi september 
she was also um, an activist wow. that highlighted once again the colored community um, or I do things that would emancipate the Cape Flats mm. and like have the people of the Cape Flats' voices heard because there is amazing talent beyond the facade that has been painted around mm. the Cape Flats, like mm. beyond gangsterism, beyond all those stigmas. So you're shading some light positive stories. Yes, like I believe that so much good can come from the Cape Flats. Like it's not just, you know, a place that's gang ridden. That's yeah. how it's painted and it hurts me to know that that's how it's painted. So what's the future? What do you, what's the ideal um, standard of living that you're trying to, um, you know, for the future for of many of the Western Cape? Like, well, not just the Western Cape, just Cape Town City. Just start here. What is the future? What is your, what is your goal? How are you trying to improve our living conditions here? Are you, are you through your art and your activism? Where do we see you in the future doing? What are you going to get into politics? Are you, are you going to, you know, what is what's happening? You're going to join a, a sort of organization that's going to just change lives, you know, uplift uh, the community? Probably just create more, continue creating awareness mm. because, like, you can never stop doing that. Yeah. People always need help. And um, if I can be a part of that in any way, I'll mm. by all means do it for as long as I possibly can. Mm. For as long as I have air in my lungs, I'll do it. Um, and also, just creates an environment where like I said what I do with break the silence is create an environment mm. so where people feel safe because something I've noticed at my protests is that girls would come forward and speak about the experiences mm -hmm. in a circle and we'd cry together we'd laugh together we'd look at the fact that there is hope together mm. and as for creating a better society like I said there is so many creative people mm. Um, that are too scared to come out with their creativity, with their ideas. Mm. And Why do you think so? Judgment, fear mm. of judgment, also the fear of not being good enough, the fear mm. of not being accepted in society. Mm. Do you feel that way? At first I did, especially, mm. I mean it takes a lot of guts to mm. have a protest yeah. <laughs> and speak about things, call people out to misogyny because it's also dangerous. Yeah. I mean, you are putting yourself in a very vulnerable position like for a cause that men hate and that is the emancipation of women. Yeah. Well, some men hate, yeah. not generalize. Um, but I mean, it's worth it. It's worth it, yeah. It's going to be powerful stuff out here. Any other questions, guys? I feel like you guys are like in the zone here. Yeah. You good? Cool. No questions? Ah, okay, cool. We're closing up now and I have more questions. One more question is like, do you believe in toxic femininity? Yes. Why? Because there are like, you can't take men's rights away completely mm. to boost a woman's rights. You can't step on someone else's head to get to the top. Mm. As much as there is misogyny going on and sexism, like mm. we see all of that, we also have to acknowledge the fact that men do have emotions, they do have moments where suicide is real, mm. mental health issues is real, and if we constantly um, ignore those feelings, it's going to negatively affect them even more. Yeah. So when we use femininity, we've got to use it to encourage women, build up women, not break down wow. people around us to get to the top, because then our foundation is going to crumble ultimately. I love that. So you're not left or right, in between. Yes. But I'm obviously going to gear towards yeah, yeah, of course. supporting women. Of course, of course. You <laughs> but know. I do acknowledge the existence of man and wish nothing but the best for your gender. Would you prefer to date someone that's. Uh, one more question. Do you prefer someone to date someone that's like a feminist? So it's more just someone who's just like very in tune with his feelings and is not a macho man whatsoever. Sadly, I've never dated someone who's like a feminist. Wow. Um, is that why you they broke things off? Because it. Because <laughs> it makes sense. Because <laughs> it didn't no. work out. Because it didn't align to your core values. Uh, no, um, things have their seasons that okay. come to an oh, end. Okay, okay. But sorry to keep personal. Just like yeah, no, yeah. it's okay. Um, no, it's uh, anyone is like fine. Just respect women. Don't compromise women. And yeah, mm. so 
I would love to continue this conversation with these guys on my case, you mm -hmm. know. But thank you for coming on the show, Thank Zilia. you for having me. I have learned a lot. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have learned here. I was like listening to your story and I was like, I'm fascinated, but I want to ask more questions and I want to get to know more. Hopefully, you can come and share more of this, uh, the stories because this conversation never ends here. It continues to have it often on camera, you know, because it's constant learning for you and I and everyone that's watching out here mm -hmm. to help improve our way of thinking and our mindset as well because we think we know something but it's completely different because while we portray and our, how we like act and behave has a negative or positive impact on the next person so we need to be mindful for that so thank you for coming to the show and sharing that side of, yeah. of knowledge and and i felt a, a little bit clever now than than i was earlier on so i will give all thanks to you you know thanks so much so i'm continue doing the good work and i just wish you all the best you know thank you too, you're man. welcome don't come for me for next time you know because i was scared <laughs> the last time you no, came come, i'll come at you gently yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I now understand you were in your beginning stages in in that uh, activism, you know, like still figuring things out. Um, yeah. And now, but now look, look at you doing the most, uh, to putting a positive light onto the the community of Cape Town, you know, Thanks especially so for much. the youth as well. Hopefully, the youth can be more inspired to get involved in what you're doing, so that we can spark a difference for not only for the present but for the future. All right, guys. With that Thanks. being said, I'm ending the show, and I'm your host, Caleb Jesse Hendricks, signing out. Catch me, catch me, catch me, yeah Drowning in ambition now Wet. Turning all these tables now Blip. Burning all these bridges down Lit. Catch me, damn, damn, damn Catch me